Hi, Scott Willison here, owner of the Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington. And uh, it is winter here in the Pacific Northwest. We're going to tie winter steelhead fly. Uh, this is kind of just a staple bread and butter, uh, sort of smaller fly for, for clearer flows or where you've got a little bit more visibility in the river. Uh, I fish this one a lot on the Nooksack, uh, the Skagit, and the Sock when the, the conditions warrant it. Uh, it's a relatively simple fly to tie, um, and uh, we'll just call this one the, the Playmaker. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start our thread on the hook here. And I'm just using actually not using a hook, I'm using a 27 millimeter uh, Aquaflies uh, shank. Uh, this is this has a nice return loop on it. Um, uh, great little shank I've been tying on uh, for the last winter or so. We're gonna go ahead and get our eyes started and I am using just a pair of small red painted lead eyes. You could use the uh, nickel plated ones if you wanted to. I often do but these these make it look cooler so it's it's all about the cool factor. And with this nice return loop you've got kind of a doubled shank that creates a nice flat base to mount these eyes on so it doesn't take a lot to get them get them seated. Uh, we're going to get one other little step out of the way here and we're going to give this kind of a a little egg head. I've just got some size small fluorescent neon red chenille and we'll go around the eyes twice, behind them once, and then around them twice, the other direction. A lot of guys would do this step at the, the very end. I'll kind of show you why I like doing it this way at the end, but, uh, but it's typically the first thing I do. And then we'll go ahead and just flip this. I just rotated. I'm using a OPST shank chuck tool. Works really well when you've got just a shank to tie with and you're not using a, a, a hook of, of any sort that's going to clamp into the jaws of your vise. Uh, I'm going to show you a new trick that uh, I have been a huge fan of since it uh, became available. We started carrying it last year. Uh, but this is the, the Jerry French Ultra Tubing, and I'm going to show you how to, we're going to tie this one as an Ultra Rig. Um, so I've got, this is, this is what the tubing looks like. It's just a clear silicone tubing, and I've cut myself a, a short length of that. I've also cut uh, about 5 inches or so of 50-pound uh, Power Pro. Uh, traditionally, when I'm tying um, my stinger flies uh, with, I've, with a trailing hook, I like to use a relatively stiff connection, whether it's wire or mono, just so we make sure we're keeping the hook in a consistent place on the fly. Uh, and the downside to, to those is sometimes they get bent or, or uh, they don't quite want to sit right so Jerry's got a wonderful solution for that which I'll show you in a minute. For our stinger hook we're going to use a size 4 aqua talon hook and I'm just threading that power pro through the eye of the hook like so and then we're going to pull the loop under it and seat it tight and the next thing we're going to do is we'll just use a standard bobbin threader here. I'm just going to run that through the, the ultra tube. And then 
if I can open it up, we will uh, use that to thread the Power Pro. Oops, we got half of it that time. We'll use it to thread the Power Pro through the, the tubing. There we go. So we end up with a, a short little section of, uh, of tube on there. Um, next thing I'm going to do is just kind of manipulate these strands of Power Pro so that uh, they're not twisted or anything that's going to cause the fly to ride funny. And then I typically like to have my hook point running up instead of down. So I've got these lead eyes here on the underside of the shank. They're going to keel the fly so uh, it's going to ride with the return loop eye with the up eye facing up. So I'm going to tie in my stinger hook facing up as well. And once I've, I've got that in there loosely, I'm just going to kind of pull the material. We'll go ahead and harness our hook in that tubing there. And I'm going to tie it up more or less so the end of the, the tubing is pretty, pretty flush with the the end of the shank, or at least the end of the exposed portion that's not in my chuck tool. And then I'm going to wrap over that. I've got these two ends here that I'm just going to pull back and wrap over. And then once we've accomplished that, we can go ahead and trim that stuff. And we're good to go. There's our ultra rig setup. Um, I'm just going to be very careful today. Normally I like to stick a piece of cork or something over this hook and uh, not impale myself, but uh, I don't have one handy at the moment. So we're going to just try really hard not to have an accident. Um, and then I've got uh, for the, the back of the body of the fly, I have some blue flat diamond braid. We're going to tie that up kind of the mid shank area so we can get a nice uniform underbody. And then we'll go ahead and tightly wrap that up the shank. good. Next I have some UV purple ice dub. I'm just going to get a, a little pinch out. And we're just going to twist that on the thread and we're going to make ourselves a little, little dubbing ball. We're going to use some marabou on the fly and uh, that little ball is going to kind of help help spread it out there. Um, so I'm going to do a couple different colors on here but I'm going to start with just a black marabou uh, feather. This one looks like a blood quill. Um, I, I often use spay quill on these as well. And I like to give myself just a nice clean handle 
to work with on these. So I strip away all the fluff at the base. It's going to make for much cleaner tying. And then I'm going to sweep the fibers back there so I've just got the, the tip of the feather exposed. And we'll go ahead and just cut that now and tie it in by that that little tip point. I'm going to fold that marabou under. Uh, once I remove the, the hook from my hand. And then we'll take Two to three wraps is all. I like I like to keep these fairly sparse. fingers and just get get that marabou a little moist so it, uh, it will stay out of our way. It's kind of staticky here in the fall so we want to not have to mess with that. Uh, I've got some just purple uh, crystal flash that we're going to add in. Cut two strands of that, and I'm going to tie two on the near side, and then we'll just fold the other two over to the far side, and we'll get those in there. And then I'm going to trim them up, and I typically do these are going to be roughly the length of the marabou, maybe a little bit shorter, but I always trim them kind of un unevenly. just makes for a more natural looking fly in the water. All right. Now, I have a very fancy, uh, it's a purple barred fuchsia uh, marabou feather. Uh, this is from Montana Fly Company. Uh, some of the best marabou I've ever seen and they've got all kinds of wicked colors like uh, black and blue, black and purple. Um, this is one of my favorites here. So we'll do the same thing as we did on the black feather. We're just going to kind of strip away some of that fluff at the base. So we've got just a nice clean stem to work with and then We'll expose that tip. This one's got a real fine tip. I just hooked myself again. Um, so I'm just going to tie in that tip and fold it back. And see if I can get that hook out of my way a little bit better. All right. And then we'll go ahead and take two or three wraps with this one here. There we go. Wrap over that once. Unfold. 
fold that back, take a couple locking wraps of, over that, and then we can cut off the the excess. So you can see, as far as my marabou goes, it's it's relatively sparse. This thing is going to move a ton in the water. Uh, we're going to add a little bit more flash to accentuate this here, and uh, we're going to use the flash that uh, I, I think belongs in just about all steelhead flies. This is just uh, electric blue flashaboo number 6908, and I'm just going to cut a couple strands. I've kind of butchered this one up pretty well. But I've got a couple couple long ones to work with. So I've got one, one extra. So just like we did with the crystal flash, two strands down the, the near side. Fold those over, two strands down the far side. And then we'll kind of trim those up a little bit. Use a little bit more moisture to, just to deal with that marabou. If you think ahead, having a glass of water handy is always always really nice for that. Uh, we're going to finish this off with a uh, uh, just a collar of uh, this is purple uh, nature spirit or fish hunter uh, collaring schlappen. They're a little bit shorter uh, since you use so little. It's kind of more of an economical use of schlappen, and these are perfect for. Uh, collars on steelhead flies and such. So just like we did with the marabou, we're going to kind of separate some fibers away from the tip so you've got uh, that tip exposed and then we'll just trim that off nice and neat. So we've got a very, very small tie-in point. In those fibers rearward. And we'll get about three wraps with this one as, as well. to kind of gauge where where I'm going to be tying the feather off and then I strip away a lot of those fibers before I get to that point. That gives me just a nice clean tie-in point where I'm not going to have a bunch of excess materials to trim. And we'll cut that off and we are golden. So we'll finish it off by just brushing our thread with with a little bit of super glue, just some brush on Zapagap. Wrap that up on there. And then just do a quick three turn whip finish. thread and we're essentially done. Um, so the reason I like to finish behind the, the egg head here is first and foremost it's a lot easier. Um, tying off chenille, chenille creates a really tight a bulky tie-in so it's very easy to crowd the eye of the hook um, with your thread wraps tying that off. Uh, another reason is it sort of gives me a good uh, sort of spatial reference point so I I, I can uh, kind of ration out my materials um, and gauge where I want to start and stop with everything. Um, and then the last thing I like about it is because you don't have a bunch of thread wraps here at the head, 
This heavy head will sometimes get down into the rocks and get down deep. Um, if you've got thread there, it tends to get abraded and it can fray and your fly can come apart. So um, I'm, I'm sold on finishing them this way. Uh, so now that we're done with our claymaker here, um, I'm going to try to show you. I've got a little bit of exposed shank left on the hook there. And what I'm going to do is take this ultra tubing and just put that on the end of the shank there so we'll kind of pull everything away so you can see how it's set up there and with that that's going to keep my fly nice and nice and stiff where my trailer hook is there that's not going to move around a lot in the water uh, if I wanted to I could actually spin it and position my hook down or back up and that up a position that I really like but um, it's a great system and this stuff is flexible enough too to where if I needed to replace this hook I can actually kind of slide it up the shank a little bit and uh, create enough space to get a, a thread another hook on there which is really wonderful but uh, there you have it this is kind of a pur purple and purple and pink and black playmaker. You can tie these in any color you want. Uh, the sky is the limit and when it's dumping rain outside and you're bored and sitting at the tying bench uh, this is one you can crank out pretty easily and have a lot of fun with. So you can find the materials for this and many other flies at Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and thank you for watching today. We'll see you on the water.